Roberta, welcome to my channel, The Sable Stitcher. Sable is an acronym for Stash Accumulated Beyond Life Expectancy, and I know there are a lot of us out there. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Roberta Lyle, and um, just welcome if you are new to this channel. This is my fifth video, and um, I'm in a little bit different setting. And the reason is um, I'm kind of refilming my opening, so I am going to be splicing this with video shot that I um, filmed yesterday because um, the lighting turned out to be really bad and I had a lot of interruptions and forgot to mention a couple things. So I wanted to go ahead and just refilm this part today and I will put it with the part that I filmed yesterday. I'm in a different setting because um, our son and his family are visiting and they travel overnight to get here to try to make a long trip a little easy on, easier on a very busy toddler and um, ended up, none of them slept very well on the trip over so they are all kind of catching up on a little bit of sleep right now so I am off in another room trying to be a little quiet so I don't disrupt them so that's why I'm here. So um, it's been a little less than three weeks since my last video and I did try to pop on a little early so I could get this filmed before our son arrived. Didn't quite work out but um, I'm just going to take a couple minutes to um, to mention things that I wanted to be sure and mention. So just a couple of life updates. Over the past couple of weeks, I attended the Farm Girl Retreat in Amana, Iowa, which I will talk about. And um, in addition to work and stitching, I've, had, I've been doing a lot of gardening as the weather allows. We've had, uh, we've had a couple rainy days. We've had kind of times when the temperature just kind of dips back into spring type temperatures and but otherwise I have pretty much all my annuals in and I'm still getting some of the grass out of the garden we had it we have a pretty large garden area in the back and we had it professionally edged this year because we're getting older and it's hard to keep up with the edging on that so we had it professionally edged and now I'm trying to get the grass that's been creeping over out and then we will be mulching that and um, so we still have a lot of work ahead of us. I'm just so thrilled with the way the garden looks this year. We've been in this house four years. First year we didn't really do anything in the backyard. We were mostly just getting settled in. Um, we moved in at the beginning of June and then the second year we really started putting in a lot of bushes and third year, the second, the end of the second year, we had a professional landscaper come in and we had a lot of brush. We have trees and brush in the back and I kind of wanted to leave it a little more natural but the reality is we had a lot of poison ivy back there and just any time you walk through it, it you were, you know, I, I was breaking out with poison ivy and things so the landscaper cleaned it out, made a lot of different garden beds for us and then I spent last year planting those garden beds and um, if you're a gardener, you're probably familiar with what they say about perennials. Um, the saying is the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, and the third year they leap. And so that is what I'm seeing with the hostas that I planted. Um, this is the third year for some of my hostas. They are really coming back quickly and they're really large. I have a couple um, that are like Empress Wu hostas that get to be four feet tall and they look beautiful. And then I think one of the other 
reasons that they're doing so well this year is because of all the all the brushes cleared away. We don't have rabbits like we used to. I know we have predators. Our neighbor has seen a fox in the backyard, so I think the predators are kind of keeping the rabbits at bay, and um, which is really good for my plants because you know they they I I just couldn't keep ahead of them as far as eating my hostas and you know some of the other things. So so it's I'm just very thrilled with it. So I've been trying to do a little bit of gardening, and then just the other thing. Um, that's kept me busy the past couple of weeks is I am a CASA volunteer and you might have heard that term before um, either just on your own or if you follow Emily C. Um, she is a supervisor of CASA volunteers in Georgia. And CASA is a national organization and not every city has it has a franchise but we do have a franchise in Kansas City and I have volunteered with the organization for nine years. Um, CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocate. And my role is to follow kids who are in foster care. Um, sometimes they're with a family placement. In this case, they're with a foster mom. And just um, check in on with them once a month. Make sure that they're doing well as far as, you know, if parents are needing services um, to regain custody, that they're doing what they need to be doing, that the kids are safe, that they're going, you know, they're going to school, they're going to their medical appointments. And unfortunately, I have a foster mom who seems to be struggling. And um, it's a placement that um, I have three little girls I'm following. And it is hard to get families who will take sibling groups like that. So my placement is like an hour and a half away. And I've had to make a couple trips there um, in the past couple of weeks, just at range to take a morning off of work and go check up on things and write a report. And so that's been taking a lot of extra time recently. So it's been a really busy couple of weeks. And um, um, yeah, so if that's any, if you ever had questions about what it's like to be a Kassan volunteer, I highly recommend it as a volunteer activity, and I'd be happy to visit with you about that and tell you about my experiences because it's been a really important part of my life. So, but you are here to see stitching. Again, thank you. If you commented on my previous videos, I really appreciate it. I enjoy reading all the comments. I get, I enjoy getting to know people as they come back and comment, you know, on multiple videos. And I get the opportunity to meet some people at um, Cross Stitch Retreats. And it's really fun to put a face with a name and get to know a little bit about your story. That was one of my goals with starting this channel is to um, facilitate connections, to get to know more um, people that share this hobby across the United States and across the world. It's a wonderful community and then also to facilitate connections um, among all of us um, and that is why I talk a lot about cross stitch retreats because it's an opportunity to gather with like-minded people and get to know other cross stitchers and just I just find it to be a very enriching activity and love the community so but wanted to start by sharing one of my pieces that I finished um, a couple of years ago And, sorry, I'm kind of holding the microphone here too. Um, that is Blue Skin by Plum Street Samplers. And I did this on 40 count Egyptian sand linen. It's, um, I don't see this linen a lot, but it was something that was, it was offered after Needlework Market 2019, I believe. And I purchased it from a vendor online. Um, and I just thought it went well with, with the pattern or with the floss colors. So I was very happy with the way that one turned out. Um, I will tell you, there was a lot more stitching than I anticipated. I think this was the first Plum Street sampler design I did. So I was not familiar with how much full coverage areas there were. The horse, the, so obviously the horse was a lot of stitching and all those cherries was a lot of stitching. But still love this design and very glad I stitched it so since it's summer it will be out um, and I'll be enjoying that over the next few months okay and then the next piece is something that I finished last year and fully finished it just this week and that is this America pattern and 
This was by, I will have to scroll it on the bottom right now. I am not remembering who did this pattern, but this, I think it's confectionery, con something confectionery shop or something. Um, this was part of the 2021 um, summer camp challenge that is put on by Sherry from Colorado Cross Stitcher, where if you followed, if you took part in that in last year, you'll know that it's a three month virtual summer camp and every month there's a different challenge. And this, the month that I did this pillow, the challenge was um, to do something by a designer that you had never, you know, stitched a pattern from before. And so this was, this was an online shop where I downloaded the pattern and stitched it. And I did change the colors and um, I think they were brighter colors and I kind of primmed them up a little bit, but I'm very happy the way that turned out. And then I just finished it on the back, which is kind of a red, um, solid red cotton fabric. And then just covered the, I usually, you know, do a slit in the back and covered it with a little striped ribbon and a little wool star. So I'm going to put that one out and enjoy that the rest of this, um, the summer. And then this was a finish from, and it's kind of fraying here a little bit, um, from the Quilters Station Retreat that I went to. We got this cute little perforated paper pattern from Beth Twist and I was almost done with it and then misplaced the wool that the wool um, yarn that we were using for it and when I was at my last retreat I found it it was in my um, I had put it in the bag with the project I'd been working on so I was so happy to find that and get this done and this is and then Beth Twist um, had ordered this ribbon and it came from um, someone in the Ukraine, in Ukraine, and so um, she thought, you know, there was there were just shipping problems. So the ribbon actually arrived, I think, the day after she left to go to the retreat. So she kindly took all of our names and mailed the ribbon to us directly with a nice note. So that was um, just kind of one of the things she does that's over and beyond as far as you know, supporting a Ukrainian small business and then also, you know, going to the extra effort to mail the ribbon out to the 96 of us who participated in that retreat. So that was fun. And then this one, I have not quite secured it in the frame, so let me pop it in here before I show it to you. This one I had posted on Instagram and then I went back and added a little bit of extra trim to it. This is the pins and needle design by Brenda Gervais. I had, instead of doing it as three different pillows, I combined three designs into um, this little piece um, and I wanted to do it in this frame so that I could attach my um, antique sewing bird there and display that and then I'd also picked this little um, button card up at a recent at an antique show I had attended so I thought that was just kind of a cute way just to, to add that to display that too so very happy the way that turned out again um, one of the one of the girls at my like, girls one of the ladies at Quilter Station helped me pick out this fabric if you've ever been to Quilter Station you know they have thousands of bolts of fabric and I said, this is what I'm trying to match. And she just zoomed in to the right row of fabric, picked out about, started, picked out about four or five different ones. And about the fourth one, I said, I think I like that. It has, has a little bit of the cream color in it that I think picked up the color of the linen. And um, yeah, it would have taken me all day to find it. So appreciate the great customer service from Quilter Station on that one. Like I said, I just need to secure it in this frame and then it'll be ready to display in my craft room. And then one other thing I was hoping I would show you, but I actually didn't get a picture of it. I participated in the exchange um, portion of the Farm Girl Retreat. And since the designer for the Farm Girl Retreat was Teresa Kogut, um, 
Michelle Rudy, the organizer, asks that we stitch a small um, based on one of Teresa's designs. And if you're familiar with Teresa's designs, you know her. the things she stitches are usually not small. So a lot of people took a portion of the, of the design and made a pillow. Well, my idea was to make a drum out of it. And I took this row from Let Heaven and Nature Sing. And then I kind of, you know, I looked at another drum pattern to kind of get the dimensions, you know. I could have just, I just, just stitched the whole thing, but I wanted to make sure that it would, the dimensions would look okay when I was done. So, like I put like an ABC up here and I threw in, I think, some extra flowers and that kind of thing and created a drum. And I used Bonna Piper's finishing um, video and I, you know, I just was, watching that and I would you know go through and you know do several steps turn it off do several steps and then turn it on watch the next one well it took me so long to do the stitching on this that I was actually working on finishing the drum the day before the night before we left and I was up to midnight working on that which I am not a night owl that I, I mean I don't even stay up to midnight on New Year's Eve so it was really unusual for me and so I was up until midnight working on it and um looked at it and I just wasn't happy with the way it looked and I thought you know I just guess I won't be participating in the retreat but I woke up the next morning and I thought I'm gonna be really disappointed because I spent a good a good two weeks stitching you know making the stitching part for it so I took it apart and started putting it back together and then my husband actually um, went up to the retreat with me we um, used to live not far from there and so we have some good friends that he was going to hang out with and we'd hope to meet some of our former neighbor too but they were actually in um, they were out of town visiting um, well they were out of, out of town on vacation at the time so um, anyway so he drove and I stitched all the way up to into the time we drove into the Amanda's um, and finally finished the drum and was so happy the way that it turned out and um, kind of long story short um, when I got up there I connected with my friends from Kansas City and um, I put it in a bag and put it in the back of our friends my friend's car and then you know for the exchange we brought him in we put him um, in the room um, and I thought I'll get a picture of it afterwards with whoever claims it well afterwards <laughs> Um, it took us a long time to do the exchanging of the gifts because there's, you know, someone picks a, picks, you know, one of the sam one of the um, smalls, they open it, and then someone else can steal it, and so if you get it stolen, then you have to pick another one, or you have to steal someone else's. And a lot of people participated. There is 76 of us at that retreat, and a lot of people participated, and so the short thing the short story is that by the time we were done um, the person who had um, claimed my exchange piece was no longer there so I never got a picture of the finished piece but if you do watch Teresa Kogut's video um, recap of the retreat where she shares some of the exchanges uh, there is a picture of um, the winner uh, or the person who picked my small and her name is Janice holding it up and yet that you can see the little raccoon on the drum but I was really tickled with the way it turned out so um, if I can I will insert a picture here of um, me when I was stitching it at Quilter Station because Rita had taken a picture of it and um, I should stitch another one for myself because I was just really thrilled. It's a beautiful pattern and it was a lot of fun and I learned a lot from doing it. So that was, so thanks. Thanks Michelle for encouraging us to take part in that and for um, encouraging us to do something different by just, you know, instead of just picking a pattern and stitching it as, as designed, having to stretch ourselves and figure out how to adapt a design to be a small and fit in the exchange. So, Let's see here. Okay, I wanted to thank Rachel from Needle and Flax. She had mentioned my um, floss tube video and I'm a big fan of hers and I enjoy watching her videos and hearing how she, I think we have a lot of, we have a lot of similar tastes in what we sew, but then also 
I love history, so I love hearing her reminisces or her when she goes off on, you know, a tangent or whatever and talks about first ladies or whatever. I really I just appreciate her mentioning my channel. And then um, one of the other things she had put me on the spot was saying I was developing a website. Well, I am still, my husband actually is developing the website. And, you know, I kind of mentioned to him, well, you know, it's getting mentioned out there by other floss tubers. So, you know, it would be good to be able to launch it sooner rather than later. And he had a really good point. He said, you know, you know how long it takes you to stitch something. He said, it's kind of the same with a website. It's not that it's not something that you can just get done in a night or two. It's going to take some time to do it and do it right. So he is working on it. And in the meantime, I continue to learn about um, additional retreat hosts. And I will continue to share that here as I learn about those and try to give you warning um, about when there's upcoming registrations opening because a lot of these fill up quickly. And so, so when I was in Amana, Someone had mentioned um, retreats to me, and they talked about uh, retreats that are hosted by Annabella. And that was not something I was familiar with, but uh, a week later, I was at my stitching group, and one of my stitching friends said that she watches um, the floss tube videos that um, are put out by Annabella, and she also mentioned the retreats. And um, actually, by that time, I had contacted Annabella to learn more um, about them, and then. Rachel from Needle and Flax also mentioned her retreats. And so I did want to go ahead and share a little bit of information about those retreats and the things that I learned from um, my conversation with um, the sponsor, Annabella. So what I was told um, by the um, person I talked to in Amana is that these retreats take place at various places throughout our country, and um, they tend to be places that are nice vacation spots. So, you know, upcoming retreats are in San Diego, they're in um, Seattle, Williamsburg, you know, some places that are nice to vacation. And it's a, what I was told, and I haven't watched Annabella's videos yet to see if she talks about this on her videos, but it's places that she and her husband want to visit. So it gives them an opportunity to see these you know, places that they wanted, wanted to visit while continuing to work and do their and, you know, take part in their um, cross-stitch business. So the retreat this year is take, that's taking place in November um, is taking place in Asheville, North Carolina, and the um, designers on that one will be stitching with the housewives Priscilla and Chelsea. And what I was told is that retreat filled up in like yeah. two, two and a half minutes from the time registration opened. So these are, and these are pretty good sized retreats. These have about 150 to 200 stitchers, depending on the size of the venue and how many kits the designers are willing to, you know, put together for the uh, retreat attendees. But um, yes. they're, they're in very popular, you know, locations. They have great designers. So they too are filling up quickly. And, bas and basically, registration is going to open about six months before the retreat takes place. So next year there are retreats, um, four retreats in 2023, and they will take place in January in Palm Beach. And that one, the retreat, um, let's see, let me scroll back up here. That will be Primrose Cottage Stitchers, and registration for that is opening July 1st. So if you are interested in, re in a attending that retreat, um, I would go to, the, to her website, and it's annabellas.net. And then the Cross Stitch Retreats has their own page. And um, get, But I would sign up for her newsletter so that you get notification about what the process is for registering for this upcoming retreat. But that one is opening pretty soon, so that's opening in July. In April, the designer will be Teresa Kogut, and that registration opens October 1st. In um, July, the designer will be Hello for Liz Matthews, and that one will be in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. I don't know if I mentioned where Teresa Kogut's will be in Lansing, Michigan. 
And then um, in the fall of 2023, in October, the designer will be Paulette Stewart from Plum Street Samplers, and that one will be in Williamsburg, um, Virginia. So, and I think she said she's working on possibly a fifth retreat for 2023, but there's no details on that one yet. So again, if that's something you're interested in, sign up for her newsletter and, or watch her floss tube videos because I believe she also, I don't know how, I haven't, I haven't been able to, um, watch those yet, but I do plan to be, um, become a viewer and find out more details because she did say that she does share some of her details on her videos as well. Um, but all great designers, you know, great locations. She has her 2024 locations listed as already. Um, and, and um, Kim G in, in April of 2024, she's going to be in San Diego. So that one's going to be high on my list to attend. I don't even know who the designer is yet, but I would love to have an opportunity to go out there and um, tend to retreat out there. So one other thing that was I thought was really interesting, if you like to travel, you like to see different things, um, the retreat that's coming up in Asheville, her retreats take place on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And on Sunday, you have an, op an option to add in a tour of the Biltmore Estate and get to see their Christmas decorations that will, they'll have up um, already in November. And so um, she it sounds like she tries to do something like that at all her retreats where there's some, you know, if there's something nearby that, you know, is, um, is, is like a tourist attraction, you have an option and that would be like an additional expense to um, attend that. So... Her retreat um, costs do not include, you know, the cost of the hotel room. They don't inc include meals. That's all on your own. And what she said is, you know, a lot of these venues happen in towns where people like to get out and they, you know, they usually break for like an hour to 90 minutes for lunch. And it gives people to go out the time to go out, walk around the town, you know, visit some of the nearby shops. I mean, if you're in Williamsburg, how fun would that be to just, you know, go out in your lunch hour and wander around the town and just see some of the different buildings there and, you know, maybe eat at one of the taverns. So um, that is kind of a fun thing. The designers usually bring a trunk show um, to these retreats and then um, Annabella will also bring have a pop-up shop there and offer things um, from her from her um, inventory so those are really fun um, yeah so if that might be something you're interested in you know the comments I get a lot of people say I'd like to go to a retreat but I would like to go to one that's within driving distance so this gives you a little better chance because she said the places she offers retreats are often places that don't have cross-stitch shops. Um, but if they do, you know, you know, sometimes people will drive to the retreats and they will, you know, like on the lunch hour, they will drive and go visit, you know, if there's a cross-stitch shop, you know, 15, 20 minutes away, they'll go visit that. So um, it's just if, since these retreats are taking place in different parts of the country, chances are, you know, at some point, maybe there will be one that's a little closer to you. So. Um, just check out her website and get on her newsletter and just look for more information about um, when they might be, where the next retreats might be taking place and see if there's one that might be convenient for you to attend. So that is it on that. Let me check my notes here. Um, while I'm checking my notes, I will show you my calendar for this month. Um, I've stitched every day this month and I... You know, I have the vintage flower book and I try to post pictures of flowers that I have blooming in my area at this time. So that's been fun. And so I think the next thing I'm going to do is show you what I have been working on. Let me check here. Okay, I guess I wanted to mention one more thing. Um, I mentioned last on my last um, video, the Sampler Guild of the Rockies, they are um, in the midst of their membership drive because their, um, their guild year starts in September. And as I mentioned, this is going to be the 30th anniversary of the guild, so they're trying to, if you're interested in joining, 
this would be a good time to join so that they can get you on the roster and whatever kind of special um, goodies they send out in celebration of their 30th year that will ensure that you are um, part of their roster and able to um, take part in you know whatever kind of things that they're sending out to celebrate 30 years as a guild so um, check that out it's on the face it's on Facebook it's, on, it's a Facebook group sampler guild of the Rockies and you can find out more information and direct message um, the membership secretary there and then one other thing I guess some uh, people have asked have said they would like a resource for finding out where there are cross stitch shops and there is also a Facebook group called stitching road trip and so that one is a place where um, you know people can mention you know say you know I live like I could say I live in you know Kansas City area and we have you know Quilter Station in in Lee Summit and CC and Company in Blue Springs and you know I don't put their addresses on but it's just a good way um, if you're traveling to a city you're not familiar with you could go on this Facebook group again it's Stitching Road Trip and look up and see um, what shops might be in your area that you might want to visit. So that's it on that. Um, I guess next thing I was going to, I do have my list. I have it in, in order here. Um, I kind of, yeah, I have some scribbles on it too. Next thing I did want to talk about the retreat that I attended, which was the um, Farm Girl Gathering Retreat in Amana, Iowa. And it was fabulous as this is the second farm girl retreat I've attended it was just fabulous it was so much fun everyone there was just so kind and so um, you know welcoming and just everyone enjoyed visiting with each other though when going around and seeing what people were stitching on or if you look at Teresa's video and see some of the pieces that people brought for the exchange it was amazing and just very inspiring um, as I mentioned, I went with my husband. We got kind of a late start because I was trying to finish my drum or get my drum to a place where I could finish the stitching in the car, the you know final stitching in the car. And so um, I had um, was very fortunate that um, a friend that I had met through attending prior retreats who wasn't going to this retreat had reached out to me and said, "If you want to get together, I'd be happy to come. You know, pick you up in Amana, and we can you know." hang out together for a little bit. So Michelle picked me up. Um, I arrived a little bit after about 3.30 and we met at the general store in Maine, Amana. And um, she said, would you like to go to Fern Hill, which is in right out a another little ways. And um, so Fern Hill was in, I think it was in South Amana. Um, I get confused because I think we went through High Amana and then we went through Middle Amana and then the South Amana to get to Fern Hill. But, it's a very charming store. It has a lot of, it's been there a while. I remember it, it was there when, um, I don't know if it was there when we used to live there, but I visit there a lot because my parents were there for many, or lived nearby for many years, and my friends lived nearby, and that was always, you know, going to the Manas was always a popular thing to do because of their antique short, short shops and, and um, stores. So Fern Hill's been there a while, and they sell like they have, really beautiful architectural salvage like stained glass windows and then they have um, nice faux florals which I love I love to put them around you know um, and I don't buy a lot of fresh flowers but I like having you know vases with faux flowers in them or having something out on my patio and um, and then they have a like a quilt shop upstairs they have a lot of batiks upstairs and you know just a lot of bolts of quilt fabric so it was a really it was very fun I didn't realize they closed I think they closed at four so we didn't get to spend too much time there and then we went back to Maine Amana and um, one of the antique stop shops was still open we kind of find that found out that a lot of the shops close at four <laughs> so and the restaurants closed pretty early too um, we had arranged to meet our friends for dinner and um, I suggested meeting at 6 and my friend said well you know the restaurant closes at 7 so we had to meet a little earlier than that but um, anyway so um, 
So we went back and we visited one of the antique stores, but um, I just wanted to share a couple things that Michelle brought, and she's a very talented lady. She's a beautiful stitcher and um, does other needlework. She does quilting, but they also raise their own bees, and so she brought me a waxer that she made out of um, the wax from her beehives. So is that not amazing? And she said to, uh, I should use it. I don't know. It's just so pretty. I don't know that I want to use it. It's so, that's just beautiful. So that was, I mean, it was just fun to spend time with her. And then also, you know, some beautiful little um, marking pins. So and a little sticker. So thanks, Michelle. It was just so fun to get together with you. So I hope hope we can do that again next time I'm in Iowa or if you get down to one of our retreats. So that was, um, let's see, that was Thursday. And then actually the retreat opened Thursday night from 6 to 10. There was stitching at um, the Price Event Center where the retreat took place. And so, like I said, we met our friends for dinner. And then afterwards, my husband dropped, a, dropped me off at the event center and... I started stitching with some friends and then um, they took me back. We all stayed at the same bed and breakfast and it's De Hammett in Williamsburg. Williamsburg? That's not right. I'll think of it. It was the it's the one colony that's not a mana it's not a mana colony. They bought this um, town because they needed access to a railroad and so it's escaping me right now but anyway that's where we stayed so um then the next day we got to meet teresa um you know we pretty much stitched all day there's breaks for lunch and dinner and then the town is right there and you can walk through you know town you can go to the antique shops there's a really nice general store a lot of we went to the um what used to be the um, furniture factory and one of the things they make there are shaker boxes, beautifully made shaker boxes. And so um, that was a real popular item for people to buy and just, you know, hung out and had a good time. Um, and then the next day was the day Saturday. We got our retreat project and you might have seen by now. Um, Teresa gave us our projects in this lovely box. Isn't that beautiful? So that was kind of gave us a hint about what was inside. And inside we got a adorable pattern for this is a like a needle book it's called mm -hmm. Molly's Hands Needle Book, and we got awesome cross stitch chart we actually got two cross stitch charts let's see kind of a smaller version and the floss and then um, country mocha linen Great floss holder that is homegirl gatherings on the back, and the a needle minder. And look how cutely, how cute that's displayed. So it was awesome. We were all very thrilled to get that project, and uh, it was really fun. And then Teresa also had a pop-up shop, and I will insert some pictures of that here. It was very beautifully displayed, and we took turns walking into the shop to, um, you know, purchase some things. Um, and one of the things, I, I just got a couple of things at the shop, and one of them was this new book that, that has just come out. And she had the models for all of these things in the in her pop-up shop. And the um, way she puts things on books, I just, it was, 
I've never tried mounting any of my finished needlework on a book, but it looks really great. She just does such a great job finding a book that's just like has the perfect color, you know, of cover. So that is one thing I would like to do is, um, you know, the pieces that really appeal to me. I really like that little pillow. This, I think, was really great. That White House against the flag. That's just classic. And then this one, um, and I have a picture of this um, in her shop. That is just amazing. And I don't know if you can, I think you can see how there's like a pattern in the stripes, whether it's the white or red stripes. So that one really appeals to me too. So everyone sees something different. I know Rachel showed this book too, and she liked um, the two little patriotic people high-fiving each other. And, um, they had this book to at Quilter Station when I was there last weekend for our stitch group and you know a friend and I were looking at it and we're like we don't like to stitch people <laughs> so, so the ones with people don't appeal to us but you know we like the ones with the flag in the house so that's all cool and I have a couple of a couple of linens and floss picked for those already and then I also got come into the, my garden come to the garden and that was beautiful in person I mean everything was beautiful in person it's hard to kind of limit myself okay and then I also got some of these um, cards and I think this is a there's she has a variety of these cards and these are things that you know you would put on the back of your sampler to say when you stitched it and I so I thought well, some of these are the same. I thought these were really pretty. Look at that, here, their Americana one. But I thought these were also good things to include in little gift bags for other stitchers. So that's what I did. One of the things we did at the retreat, and we did this Saturday night. I think we did this before the exchange. Um, you had the option of bringing a bag to a bag and you know with like a suggested amount of things um dollar amount of things and then we just all that's how we do this i think by table she would we were all we were sitting in long tables but they were arranged so that they were like perpendicular to the front so you know when we were if you're at quilter station or when we were at quilter station you were seated like you were in a schoolroom where everyone's facing to the front, you know, you're all facing the front. Well, this is these, I think there were four rows of tables, three or four rows of tables. And, but there was enough room so you could get up and walk around and you could walk around and see what everyone was doing. So that was really good. I think that really made it a lot easier to visit with people and get to know people. And just, um, you know, you had people directly across from the, you that you could talk to. You had people on either side that you could, you know, visit with. So I really like that setup. I think it gave you an opportunity to talk to and visit with a lot more people. And then she, um, she say, Michelle Rudy encouraged us to mix it up when we went to meals and sit with different people. And that was fun to sit with different people, you know, for an hour or so and just get to know them a little bit. And um, so, yeah, it was it was a lot of really great opportunities to visit with other people and get to know them. But, so we, you know, if you chose, you could, you know, bring something to exchange with someone. And um, so what I, what I did is I had kind of a theme in mind, but um, my friends and I ended up going to the Woolen Needle on Saturday morning. Friday morning, I think it was Friday morning, I'm losing track of days, it's been, it's been a week. And I was like, I don't need to go there, I don't need to buy any wool projects. Well, I'll insert some, some pictures here. It was the cutest little shop, um, and that's in Williamsburg. Um, cute little shop, lots of great, um, you know, finished pieces, everything is just beautifully displayed. I love old shops like that with so much character that I ended up getting this they had this finished piece there and so it's wool but it's also has like the embroidery stitches on the linen it has just a great old-timey look 
And then she has like the, um, what do you call this? The pearl cotton kitted up, you know, that, that you would use to finish this. So I'm hoping to get that assembled and work on that this maybe um, when I have when I have an upcoming trip with all that. And I also picked up this beautiful fabric. And I'm thinking one of these days I will make a project bag. And I think that would be so pretty for like a summer project bag, that red, white, and blue fabric. And then I picked up another kit and that's what I gave as my, um, as my um, exchange gift because I thought that might, that probably, it seemed like everyone was going to the wool and needle and like everyone was interested in doing wool applique. So I thought, well, hopefully whoever, whoever gets this will enjoy doing that. But that was my reasoning. I thought it was something different. So I picked up a little patriotic um, penny rug applique kit and that was what my exchange gift was. And then in return, I got a beautiful um, Creative Carol Designs pro um, project bag. I love it. And is that adorable? So this is good. If you you know are going to exchange and in your or you know to a retreat and you know and they're having an exchange and you're wondering what kind of things do people get or do, this is what they do. Included the pins. Queen Bee Floss. I didn't even know there was Queen Bee Floss. Is that so cute? And then a couple of really cute patterns. And this has... And open this. It has something else in it. And then this one includes a little... I guess that's a little magnet and some more little buttons in this pattern. Did I show you the pattern? There's the pattern. I'm not familiar with that. And what a cute theme was this, this one was. Heart the um, heart and hand little bee. Um, oh, a little bee bowl cover. And then a sweet note. And then this one was from Michelle Tarman. So thank you, Michelle. That was just, I felt very fortunate because um, on this exchange, you picked your gift and that was it. There was no stealing. But then, you know, then we did, following that, we did the um, part where you opened your exchange. And the way they do it is you get a little ticket and then someone draws, you know, they have a bowl with the, you know, the matching numbers for your ticket. And they draw a number. And if it's your number, you come up and, um, you can either pick from the pro the bags that are there and it's, you know, you don't know what's in them, you don't know who brought them, but you can pick a bag and then open it up and you show everyone, you know, what your, your little exchange piece was. And then the next person that comes up, they can eat, you know, whose ticket is called and comes up, they can either pick a new, something new from all the, you know, gifts that are there or they can steal from, they can steal what was already, um, what someone else had already picked. Now the good thing was you could only get stolen from once. So, you know, I, when I, when it was my turn to go up, and then the other kind of twist, this was something new this year, on some of the tickets on the back, it had the letter, it had the letter S. And if there was an S on the, ticket because Michelle likes to encourage, you know, having a fun event and just the kind of the, the fun and hilarity that goes with, you know, stealing from someone else, which doesn't, doesn't sound like it'd be fun, but it is kind of fun to see, you know, how that all kind of happens. Um, so if you had an S on the back, you either had to steal or you had to take a shot of fireball. So, so the first time I went up, um, I took the shot, so I so I was able to pick out something new, and um, the piece I picked, and this I think this was also shown in Teresa's um, video. If you watch Teresa Kovitz's video, was on like black linen, and it was I only had it in my hands for about 
three minutes, so I don't really remember a whole lot, but it was really beautiful. It came with a project bag. And, you know, I think the next person who, whose ticket was drawn who came up just stole it from me. So, so I had that about, you know, um, just a hot minute. And so since I knew whatever I took was not going to be taken from me because you can only get stolen from once, I stole from someone else. And I also, you know, didn't want to take another shot. But, but that's kind of an excuse. I really wanted to steal this. So Jen Reagan, who is... Um, Jen's stitching niche on floss tube, and she has a she has a um, shop which I've purchased from several times. Had brought this, and I'm sorry someone had picked this out, and I saw this you know this bird piece and a cute little spoon, and I have a um, a table that has a lot of like kind of a garden display on it, and. My goal is to finish some like nature themed um, cross stitch pieces and hang them above that table. And so I thought this would be just perfect on that table. So I stole it, I'm sorry, not sorry, not sorry. And um, was very happy to go home with that. So that was by Jen from Jen Stitching Niche. So that was fun. And then let's see what else. Um, you had the option to buy things um, some of the some of the different participants brought things to sell, and one of them was Robin from Sampler Bird Stitches, and she had these very cute tomato and um, scissor fob kits available for to purchase, and they are all kitted up. And then she had you could get this I think in silver, black, or rose gold, and I got the rose gold for the little. Um, the little piece that you use to, you know, your scissor fob piece. So it's everything you have, you need to complete this little, those little pieces, except that, you know, some fiber fill. But those are really cute. Um, and Robin, I met Robin, she was actually staying at the Hammett too. And so we, you know, we all, there were, you, you know, breakfast was at a certain time. So we all ate breakfast together and got to chat with her and got to get to know her a little bit. So that is so cute. Try not to say that's adorable about everything like I did on my last video, because I thought, you know, if it was a drinking game and you had to, you know, take a shot or whatever time, every set, time I said adorable, you would not be awake at the end of that video. So try not to say that about everything. Um, and then um, um, Lisa from Kindred Stitcher had project bags in several different beautiful fabrics. So, and I had this one filled already. Um, I got a couple of project bags from her. So that was fun. And then just People are nice and they just go around and they give you gifts, you know. And so you might have seen some of these gifts on other videos. Look at this beautiful needle book in, out of this blackbird fabric. And everyone at the retreat, and I think there were 76 of us at the retreat, everyone at the treat, retreat got these beautiful needle books. And these were done by... Um, Colleen from Stitching with the Sisterlies, I believe. So thanks, Colleen. Those then has a little place where you can attach your scissors. They're so well made. That was very kind of her. Um, Jen Stitching Niche gave us floss rings and candy. Let's see. Fancy Floss friends Jen and Mary gave us a little um, needle minder and a and a counter. That was nice. Karen from Texas crocheted everyone these little. Um, um, Flowers that you, you know, you can attach to your, to your um, zipper pulls on your, you know, project bags. And Karen was actually, Karen and her friend Wanda was sitting across from me. And then, um, I'm sorry, not Karen. This was done by Margaret. And then her friends were Karen and Wanda. I wrote their names here, so that's why I was saying it. But Margaret and 
Wanda was sitting across from me and then Karen was next to me and they were just, they were so much fun. They were so delightful. I was just very glad to get to know them. Um, and they were new attendees um, to this retreat. And Michelle had everyone who was a new attendee raise their hand. And I would say it was probably about a, you know, 30% or, you know, about 30% or a third of the people that were there were all new this year. So that was pretty amazing. So again, if you want to go to one of her retreats, get on her newsletter because, um, you know, these were all people, well, some of these people had not, you know, got in later, you know, they were on the wait list and they ended up getting in. So, um, this is, um, let's see for temporary stitches and beautiful floss cards or floss yeah floss cards floss tags and we got a threader from elaine bauer teresa kitten stitcher went around and she had a box of fabric and you got to choose fabric and i chose this and i came home and i have a very similar one that i purchased from her that's in kind of neutral so I guess I'm pretty consistent, but that's a really nice piece of fabric. Um, I mean, that again, that would make a beautiful project bag. So thank you, Teresa. Let's see. Kathy Lounsbury, who is a prolific model stitcher and does beautiful work, made everyone waxers. So thank you, Kathy. I really enjoyed getting to chat with you a little bit. Um, Got a whole packet of goodies with candy and a pen and cute little floss cards. And these were from Laura Love, I guess. And this is um, her website is lovesrubberstamps.net. And then she also has sells, I think, has a Scentsy business. So I wash. So that cute little bag. And let's see. And then. Got a whole packet of things here from, let's see, including these little covered buttons. And this was from Teresa Jacoby at Strictly Stitchy. And I had a chocolate emergency and had to break into this last night. But a whole bunch of nice little snacks. So thank you, Teresa. Everyone was just so kind. So just amazing. And then one last thing, I think, from the retreat. And, um, you know, then they also just have a drawing and give away just random things and to anyone, to anyone. They just, you know, call out your little tickets. And I won um, this kit of all through the night um, wool applique ornaments. So I've always loved all through the night. I think that's just, they're great designers. And years and years ago, I went to Quilt Market once and saw their things in person. And just like anything else, when you see them in person, they are just stunning. So, way better than you can ever get a picture of. So, that was the retreat. One other thing, I picked up a book because I do love history. I tend to read a lot of nonfiction, a lot of historical fiction. And um, this is written by the, I think, the grandson of a lady who was um, in the 1930s, the Amana colonies stopped being communal and went to um, personal ownership of property and that kind of thing. And so she was, a, you know, I don't know if she's a young adult. I haven't gotten to that part yet, how old she was when they went through that change. But she was old enough to remember what it was like before it went, it, before when it was a communal con colony and then what it was like afterwards. So started reading that and it's really interesting because like I mentioned, I grew up in Sea Rapids, which is about 20 minutes away from Amana. And so one of the things it mentions is that the, um, the people in the colonies had a close relationship with the Meskwaki Indian tribe. And um, back in like the early 1900s, the, um, the native, the, Mus the Mus people from the Meskwaki tribe who were native to the area, um, would camp along the river in the summer and then in the winter they would go into, you know, their own villages or whatever. And it's interesting to me because, um, you know, the government, as they were doing, were trying to move them all down to a reservation in Kansas. And some of them 
just refused to go. And what they did is they brought bought their own land by Tama, Iowa, and it's called the Meskwaki Indian Settlement. And I, when I was little, I would say, well, why is it a settlement? Why isn't it a reservation? Well, it's because they decided they were going to they were going to live where they wanted to live, and they bought their land, and so it's their land, and it's not you know, something that the government said, this is where you need to move to. So I just think that is a kind of a a pretty, you know, um, amazing story. And just, I'm just, you know, good for them that they, you know, took their destiny in their own hands and, and didn't get pushed onto land that no one else wanted. So that was it for the retreat. Let me see here. Oh, my work's in progress. I haven't shown you that yet. Well, I've only done a couple of things, but I have made, I feel like I have made good progress on what I have been working on. And so one of those is Caroline Amelia Trowell. And here's the pattern. Again, I don't like stitching people, but those people are just so darn cute. I don't mind. Oops, and I have not ironed this, so sorry about that. Um, I am stitching this on 40 count vintage light exemplar by Lakeside. And here is my progress. So like I said, I'm sorry I did not iron this yet. Why am I showing that? Um, I have decided to give myself assignments. I always I like to listen to Olivia from you know Pumpkin Hollow Quilts and she'll talk about how how that gives her assignments, you know, about so that they're working on something together and they have to finish this this month. So I thought, well, that's a good idea. And this is one, this pattern, as I have mentioned, I'm trying to stitch this for Sampler Guild of the Rockies. This is my challenge piece, and I'm supposed to have this done by September. So I went through and I just kind of divided up what I thought I could get done every month. And um, so I finished, did I finish my part? I have not yet finished my part for June. But I'm getting closing in on finishing. No, I'm sorry, for May. I'm getting ahead of myself. I um, have assigned myself some certain amount to finish by May, and so hoping to get that done. I'm getting quite, pretty close to getting that done. That's my progress on that one. And then I had posted this one on um, Instagram, and this is Vintage Birds by Jeanette Douglas, and this is a pattern that a friend um, is loaning to me. So I try to keep, this is the, keep the original pattern in plastic, and then I have my working copy on this one, because I don't want to mess her pattern up. And I showed, I posted on Instagram my goal for this month. I gave myself assignments on this one too, because this is also, they have a different term for it, but this is a challenge piece for the Sampler Guild of the Rockies. And um, if I don't get this one finished by September, then I think I have to pay like a $5 fine that would go to something like $5 fine. I think that's what it is. And it goes to, you know, upkeep of some um, antique samplers in a museum or something. So it goes for a good cause. But still, I would like to get this done, and I am a lot more motivated after finishing that turkey, a turkey, sorry, peacock, because I was so dreading doing that. Thinking, and even looking at the um, instructions for how you do these Algerian eyelets was intimidating, but like I said, I love doing them. I thought they were a lot of fun, and I think I'm really happy with how he turned out. This one. I use the called for floss and it is not very vibrant. So I still might end up taking that out and redoing it with a little more vibrant floss. I'm not really thrilled with how it was faded that looks. But that is my progress on vintage birds. And happy about that. And then um, this is going to be a stitch along with um, Kim from the Contented Stitcher. We were going to start it this week, and then we both are have been, you know, busy and tied up with other stuff. So we are supposed to be going to be starting this on the weekend, and that is Sarah Allen, 1814, and Deborah from she's on Instagram, Needle and Spoons. 
has finished this. Um, she actually got this at Boxwood and Berries in um, at the Country Sampler last year. And so she finished it earlier this year and I think she and just got it framed. And so if you want to see what this looks like without all the staining, um, look at her Instagram and that's um, Needle and Spoons. She's amazing. She's a beautiful stitcher and quilter. And so because she, I asked, I asked her, Deborah, and she did this on, um, I don't have this labeled. It's not cocoa. She did it on Weeks Dye Works. <laughs> I will have to put it in the notes below because I can't remember what this is right now. But I have, I have this, I think it's the same color, but in which it's, and it's 32 counts, so I'm going to use two strands of floss. I don't know yet if I'm going to railroad it or do it like Vonna mentions where, if you've ever heard how Vonna does it, so to avoid twisting, she pokes, you know, pointy end of the needle down, eye end of the needle comes up. And so that keeps her thread from twisting. But there's the colors on this. I really like how that looks. But this Witchell, I don't think that's just how it is really stiff. So. I don't know if that's going to bother me or not. I think once I get it in a hoop, it'll be okay. But I love the color. Do I have the color in here? No, I don't have the color in here. So I will have to put that, scroll that across down at the bottom here. So that is what I'm working on. And that is kind of my upcoming plans is to start Sarah Allen. And then um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to try to get my sign my self-assigned pieces done in on vintage birds and um carolyn amelia trow so and then i had asked for comments on my last video i showed the projects i have received sorry i dropped something i showed the projects i had received um, from other retreats that i've gone to and um seems like the winner for the one I should start is the Scarlet Letter. And um, so I'm going to, that is also on my radar for starting in June. I want to do, they have a tray. And then she also has, she also gave us patterns. And this was at the Silver Needle Retreat last July. Um, we also got a pattern that included a strawberry and a, a scissor fob and a needle book, and also had a pillow, but I would like to get the sewing accessories done on that one. So that is on my radar for June. So let's see, stash. So I showed you a little bit of my stash. Uh, I just had a couple other things that I purchased. I got the birthday bag from Berry Stitchworks. And as always, always, I mean, look at that. That's beautiful. I love the twelve fabric on the back. That is so pretty. And then, let's see. And then it came with adorable little floss rings or floss tags. Thank you, Barry. I am so excited because I've been, I've had all of these project bags piled on my kitchen table until I do my filming and now I can fill them. So I'm excited about that. And then for my local shop, I've been eyeing this for a while, went ahead and got it. I love primitive hair patterns. I did one of her, I did the winter stag and that's the one that hangs in our, in our basement, kind of like we have a little bar area and I just thought that kind of reminded me of like an old tavern sign. So I love that leaf, look at that. Oh. And that's a needle book. It has a picture of it in here. Got a couple of things. This is a, oh, here's the needle. Here's the inside of the needle book. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pieces. So here's a bigger picture of the outside and inside of the needle book. I just love the way, I mean, the coloring on that leaf. Ah, so gorgeous. So I picked that up and then picked, um, picked up Halloween at Hawthorne Hollow on eBay. And what I was thinking, I also have 
Automate Hawk Run Hollow. And there's a couple, couple of the blocks on there I wasn't thrilled with and I was thinking about replacing them. And there's a couple on here I'm not thrilled with. So what I'm kind of thinking now, I don't want Automate Hawk Run Hollow to be all about Halloween. So I might replace a couple of blocks and what was I thinking? I might, oh, I might replace a couple of those blocks like, you know, and then what I'm thinking about doing, I don't love these. I don't, <laughs> I don't love little people in their coffins. <laughs> so what I think I'm going to do is like, I'll stitch these two. I love the witches. I just think those witches are so cute. I love their dresses and the bats and the cauldron. I love all that. And then I will put like, I think this one I'm going to put in Fall at Hawk Run Hollow because, you know, it's the, the scarecrow is so, you know, um, iconic fall design. And then I love the haunted house. And then I think I'm going to put the bats in the belfry and that, no, not that one. I don't know which one. Maybe I will do the little, the little I, I, maybe I'll do the little skeletons. Those are kind of interesting. So I'm going to do like these two maybe, witches, and then the bats and the skeletons down here. And then so it'll just be like that big. That's what I'm thinking about doing for that one. But... I spent a lot of time last, one of the other things I did last couple of weeks, I spent a lot of time organizing and I have kits I've received as part of, you know, clubs I belong to that I haven't, you know, gone through and put in my spreadsheet. And so I updated my spreadsheet and I have 60 things kitted up and 15 or 17 whips, I think. So I'm not bragging, I'm just... I, like I said, I did a lot of kidding last year with, with COVID and everything. And, um, and I really have done a few this year, but you know, and then I've gotten kits. So I just went ahead and kit and tracked all that. And so, um, so I know that's not going to be something that's going to be popping up on my radar to do in the next couple of years, probably unless, but anyway, I got a lot I need to I need to do and then I also I forgot I picked this up this was in Teresa's pop-up shop and I had not picked that up um, and not that I've been all that great about cooking lately but it does have a lot of great patterns in it and and it does have some really some um, good recipes good looking recipes so that's fun so I think that's it for that I want to do my giveaway and I um, Thank you for commenting. I always, like I said, it's so much fun to read what, how people work all these different random words into a sentence. And you guys are so clever and you just keep me chuckling. Um, but I wanted to give away um, this hello from Ms. Matthews design because I bought two of these. And this goes to Stitching Social's mom. So um, I will comment on your comment and either email me or or, D, or direct message me through Instagram. And um, yeah, that is probably the best way because I do try to check my email. Um, I, I try to check by your name if I know it, you know, I try to, you know, um, search by your name just to make so I'm sure I'm not overlooking something. But I did have one of my previous winners message me, um, comment on my comment, and I gave her my email, and she said she emailed me, and I, I never got it, so she ended up contacting me through um, Instagram, and I was able to get her pattern to her that way. And then for um, the pillow, this goes to Nana McStuffing. So again, please contact me below, and I will get these mailed out to you. So thank you for participating in that. And then, like I said, I did my inventory. I've got a lot of stuff kitted up and ready to go. So I want to go ahead and, oh, and then previous winners, I want to go ahead and mention them again. Um, if you've tried to contact me, I, I haven't been able to see, I haven't seen an email from you. I don't know if they go in junk mail. I don't know if 
you get thrown because my email is Roberta L1499. I don't know if it that, you know, comes out as Roberta 114499, but anyway, um, this one, Raylene Butcher. So if you haven't, if you have tried emailing me, if you can try to contact me through either Facebook or Instagram, I know I always see those. And then this one was by um, Susan Lusk. Susan Lusk was the winner of this one. And then R.A. Toth was the winner of this one. So I hope you would get in contact with me so I can get those mailed out. So I have three gives of giveaways this um, week because I have a lot that I know I'm not going to be able to get around to. And so I do want to get these out to someone who can stitch them and enjoy them and not just have them sitting, you know, in my cupboard below or my bookcase below in the basement. Um, so this is, this was a kit that I got at a silver needle retreat and this is from Heart and Hand and it is a kit for a scissor fob. So it's a little, cute little bee scissor fob kit. It has all the fabric and the rick rack and little bee, bee button. And so if this is something you want, the word to use in your comment below is fob. And then this was part of, um, since, since we just, since I just um, had a um, retreat in Teresa Kogut, I thought I'd give away a Teresa Kogut pattern. And this was something that was part of the kit Kitten Stitcher Advent Box last year. Really cute little design with Santa and, um, sn and snowman, reindeer, a lot of cute things. And so if this is a pattern you're interested in, use the word Santa in your comment below. And then finally, since I have stitched this, let me make sure it's all here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and give away my pattern for blue skin. So yeah, looks like everything's there. So if that's something you're interested in, just say blue skin. And as you can see, she did it on, you know, kind of a, what did she say she did it on? She did it on Nantucket Brew. So actually that might be more of a gray. But like I said, I did it on the um, 40 count Egyptian sand to be a little different. And I was happy. I was happy the way it turned out. But anyway, I still love that pattern. But I, I will tell you, it's going to take you a while to stitch those cherries in that horse. So again, Santa blue skin and fob, fob. Um, and don't use win in the comments um, don't use giveaway um, I would love it if you would be a subscriber and like the video and um, yeah so I will probably be back it just depends on how much time I have to stitch two two and a half three weeks um, and to catch up with you, um, I enjoy reading your comments. I enjoy getting to know people. It was really fun to put, like I said, faces with names when I meet people in person at the retreats or wherever. I've had some people, someone who's dropped by um, our stitching group the other day. So I really enjoy getting to know other stitchers and appreciate your kind comments. Um, and I think that's it for now. So. Thanks for viewing. I know this is probably one of my longer ones, but like I said, there was just so much to share um, from the past couple of weeks. So I appreciate your time hanging out with me. And, um, you know, I always think of, you know, what they say on Southwest when, you know, at the end of your flight, they say, we know you have a lot of other airline choices. So I know there's a lot of other floss tubers out there and, and it's hard to keep up with everyone, but I appreciate your time and just hope that you have some time to um, enjoy your stitching and stitch beautiful things in the next few weeks. So bye for now.